Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's a pleasure to, to see you all uh, tonight, and thank you for being here. My name is Clark Stanford. I'm the Dean of the College of Dentistry here at the University of Iowa. Um, I want to welcome you to the 2023 um, White Coat Ceremony for the College of Dentistry, and I want to give a special welcome to the Doctors of Dental Surgical Class of 2026. Congratulations. So one of the intellectual challenges of dentistry demands the concepts of curiosity, inquiry, and utmost in professionalism and ethical standards. Excellence starts with the concept of trust, and trust between the faculty and the student, and trust between the student and their patients. Trust builds what is referred to then as integrity, and integrity then means your character is the internal compass to guide you in terms of doing the very best in the patient's interest. Only through integrity then one builds excellence, and it is impossible to have excellence if you do not start with trust and build integrity to achieve excellence in the outcomes, and this is how you tie all this and learn as being in a member of a college as a member of one of the best professions, the profession of dentistry. So dentistry is a profession where the provider makes the primary diagnosis, develops a care plan, and presents this to a patient. While there may be various levels of oversight, it is still primarily a very close doctor-patient relationship. John Wooden, a retired UCLA basketball coach, once said, the true test of a character of a person is that, what does he do when no one is watching? Now, the clinical environment is defined in many ways by risk and the ethical balances that we all make. Risk assessment and management in the, is the science of using your foundational knowledge, diagnostic skills, and the knowledge of various forms of therapy to help and support the best outcomes for a patient. There are a few absolutes in clinical practice, and the ability to apply one's scientific knowledge is, in many ways, the most rewarding aspect of healthcare. It essentially defines an expert. Um, Niels Bohr, who was a famous uh, Dutch physicist, stated many years ago, an expert is one who's made all the mistakes in a very narrow field. So to the class, I would say, don't be afraid to ask the difficult questions, and certainly don't be afraid to admit mistakes. We are all human, and I have made my share. There are times in our professional career where we have the chance to use traditions to remind ourselves of why we're here. And in the past, governments allowed us to develop a process of self-governance, and thus this is what is called a profession. In turn, we are both, in, in this case, a learned profession where the profession has a set of core clinical competencies, and those are used to build the public trust. A profession, therefore, is defined by the self-governing associations as frameworks of codes of professional conduct and ethics, and in turn, recognition of these milestones by implementation of national and state licensing laws and policies. So the white coat ceremony, which we're here tonight, is the result of a vision of Dr. Arnold Gold, who in 1993 instituted the first white coat ceremony at the Columbian University College of Physicians and Surgeons in New York. Dr. Gold believed that the health profession students should be given well-defined guidelines regarding the expectations and responsibilities appropriate for the medical profession prior to their um, encountering their full education and training. He believed that a declaration of commitment when students accept this obligation of a healthcare profession should be taken at the beginning of their clinical um, training, not at the end. The coat that is going to be done tonight is a symbol of the role of science in the healing professions. And when the students don this white coat, I want them to think about the obligations that it brings, to think about the societal and supportive roles you will play in your community, and about your leadership that you will play in day-to-day, -day, utilizing your education and skills, and because in the end, never forget, the entire reason we're here is the best in patient care. So therefore, thank you very much, and I welcome you to the profession of dentistry.
Thank you. Thank you, Dean Stanford, for commencing the 2023 College of Dentistry White Coat Ceremony. I would also like to extend a warm welcome to our D1 class, as well as all the family, friends, and our colleagues joining us today to help celebrate this significant milestone. At this time, I would like to acknowledge our honored guests on stage that represent local chapters of dental associations. Their missions focus on elevating the standards of dentistry through service, leadership, research, academic excellence, and professionalism. These individuals are distinguished leaders within dentistry and in their respective organizations. Please stand as I call your name. Dr. Alberto Gasparoni from the International College of Dentists. Dr. William McBride from the American College of Dentists. Dr. Polly Iben from the local chapter of the Dental Honors Society, OKU. And Dr. Fred Burnham from the Pierre, Pierre Frichard Academy. Thank you all for joining us to support these students as we welcome them into the dental profession. Our next speaker is the fourth year dental student representative, Mr. Alex Shea. Alex was nominated and selected by his peers, his class, because he has consistently exemplified professionalism and humanism since day one of dental school. His peers wrote on nominating him, Alex has shown a passion for dentistry as well as for giving back to his classmates and student organizations through various leadership positions. He is always compassionate and careful to consider everyone's perspective and voice and to make decisions that benefit as many people as possible, including his patients. Let's please welcome Alex Shea. Uh, dear distinguished guests, faculty members, families, and fellow dental students, today is a special day for all of us as we gather here to celebrate the white coat ceremony. This is a momentous occasion for us as dental students as it marks the beginning of our journey towards becoming healthcare professionals. My name is Alex Shea, a fourth year dental student, and in conjunction with ChatGPT, it is a privilege to stand before you all today as we take the first step towards our goal of providing uh, quality dental care to those in need. ChatGPT is pretty convincing, isn't it? Uh, artificial intelligence has been in the news lately, and in higher ed, uh, people are concerned about cheating, and in the job market, people are concerned that uh, AI will replace them. In my case, I was curious how AI could write a white coat, speech, cer a white coat ceremony speech. Uh, ChatGPT wrote a very uh, formal and inanimate sounding speech uh, that I thought lacked a human touch. So don't worry, I won't keep reading that one. All right. <clears throat> to the D1s, I'm happy to see you all and I know your family and friends are immensely proud of you. Standing here reminds me of my own white coat ceremony. Due to COVID-19, ours was moved to the beginning of our second year. Instead of an in-person event, we had a live streamed ceremony from the Galligans. I appreciated the college's efforts to put on the ceremony, but truth be told, I was worn. I was preoccupied with how my classwork and clinical experiences were going to be affected by social distancing and PPE requirements. Plus, our family and friends could not be here to celebrate. Was I disappointed? Yes, but regardless of how I was feeling, the white coat ceremony still happened. We trickled into the lecture hall, donned our white coats, and recited the dentist pledge behind face shield and Iowa masks. I did my best to feel the gravity of the words during my white coat ceremony. I knew it was an important day that marked the transition from didactic learning to patient care. However, when it came time to reading the pledge, I was more focused on not tripping over my words rather than thinking about the meanings it, helped, it carried. The principles did not appear ground big, groundbreaking to me. A key tenet of the Hippocratic Oath is, do no harm. Well, of course, I don't want to do any harm, that would just be rude. And as part of the dentist pledge, it reads, I shall dedicate myself to render the best of my ability the highest standard of oral health care. Well, of course, 
I wanted to do my best. I was in dental school. I wanted to provide the best oral health care possible. To me, these were inanimate words on paper. The white coat ceremonies faded into the background, and soon we were cleaning each other's teeth. I remember how my hands shook as I brought the floss into my classmate's mouth. <laughs> Come on, man, I told him, she's just flossing teeth. And after what was probably the longest cleaning in the history of student trophies, I was done. <laughs> my classmate turned to me and said, in the kindest way possible, hey, Alex, I think in the future your patients will appreciate you if, you, if you're not trying to fit both your hands into their mouth. <laughs> Whoops. The next noteworthy stop in clinical care involved us practicing numbing injections on one another, which we affectionately call stab lab. Another set of shaky hands and half a numb face later, we all went to lunch just drooling out the side of her mouth. Uh, the days dragged on, but the weeks and months flew by, and soon I was doing restorations, crown preps, extractions, making dentures. Several weeks ago, I saw a patient that I'd been treating since my third year for their last appointment with me. I didn't expect it, but I felt my emotions surge when my patient told me, hey man, it was so good to see you one more time. I'm really glad you and I experienced all this together. I hope you learned a thing or two, because I know I did. Good luck, you're gonna be a great dentist. By the way, I'm sending you a photo of my face and I expect you to put it in the front and center of your office with the caption, best patient ever. <clears throat> Wild. I mean, I just remember upperclassmen telling me this, and I would think, that sounds like a rom-com. There's no way I'm going to feel that. But there I was, experiencing those feelings. I also had some relatives sit in my chair this year, and after their appointments, they couldn't believe that just four years ago, I knew nothing about teeth. I remember drawing a, a molar with four, four roots, um, and now I was planning out their dental treatments. In thinking about what to say for this speech, uh, I've had the opportunity to reflect on my own dental school journey and my white coat ceremony. At that time, the dentist pledge and the Hippocratic Oath seemed like inanimate words on paper. Just like in acting, a script is also word inanimate words on paper. It's up to the performer to give it life. And likewise, it is us to, up to us dental students and dental professionals to give life to the words you'll pledge today. I remember how tough the first year of dental school was, especially around this time of year. I know you all have your final Gristo exam coming up, and some of you might be feeling how I felt during my ceremony, anxious and distracted. Ultimately, I mean, uh, others of you might be lucky enough to fully feel the significance of today. Ultimately, I don't think it matters what headspace you're in at this moment. Today might be the first time you're donning the white coat, but it isn't a one and done deal. You have to earn it every day. I don't know if I truly earned my white coat during my ceremony, because for me, it took using breathing exercises to calm a patient's nerves, diagnosing the source of their pain, lending their ear, an ear to their life troubles to ultimately earn their trust and respect for me to circle back and understand what it means to wear the white coat and be worthy of it. As you continue on through your years and begin patient cares, sounds cliche, don't forget about the journey and the memories. Seek out that human touch, that human connection, the element that no artificial intelligence can have between you and your patients. Earn your patients' trust, show them empathy, and take time to reflect. Congratulations on earning your white coat, and I wish you all the best in the upcoming years. It is my honor to introduce this year's keynote speaker, Dr. Dan Kaplan. Dr. Kaplan has had an accomplished career in dental academics that spans over 30 years. He received his DDS from the University of Iowa, a certificate in general res practice residency from the VA Medical Center in Minneapolis, and a PhD in epidemiology from the University of North Carolina. He returned to Iowa in 2007 and has been the departmental executive officer in preventive and community dentistry for the past 15 years. Although he has stepped down from this post, he remains on faculty as an endowed professor. Dr. Kaplan is, in, is involved in organized dentistry and has served on numerous national and international committees. As an educator here at Iowa, he teaches in several different pre-doctoral courses with a particular interest in evidence-based dentistry, which I'm sure all of our D1s love. <laughs> he is known to be an excellent research mentor, advising over 50 graduate, pre graduate and pre-doctoral students. But perhaps what best describes Dr. Kaplan as a dentist, educator, and person is a sign on his office door that states, help others, even when you know they can't help you back. 
Please join me in welcoming Dr. Dan Kaplan. Uh, good evening, students, parents, relatives, faculty and staff, and everyone else who's here attending tonight's white coat ceremony. When Dean Krupp asked if I'd be willing to speak tonight, she didn't give me a specific topic. So I thought I'd talk about something the students have heard me mention earlier this year, but this time in just a little bit more detail, which is the importance of research in healthcare. So students, at this point, you've been taught some basic fundamentals of clinical research, but now it's time to consider why it's important that information generated from research be both understood and used appropriately. This ceremony symbolizes our trust and faith in you, your abilities, and your knowledge. Tonight, we're saying that we think you're now adequately prepared to start dealing with the broad spectrum of health issues presented to you by patients who visit our college. That's a big responsibility, especially since you'll be irreversibly removing tooth structure and bone, prescribing and administering medications that potentially have undesired effects, and advising not only your dental patients, but also your relatives, friends, and complete strangers who find out you're in dental school and all of a sudden want your opinion about their dental concerns. <laughs> so, why should research play an important role in your dental careers? Well, first and foremost, you owe it to your patients. Just as you get buried in facts and figures during dental school, the public gets buried in health-related information from many sources, including the internet. For all the good things about the internet, one bad thing is that anybody can post anything they want and readers often don't have any way to know whether or not to believe what they read. Just for fun, I googled the word fluoride and the next screen opened with the words about 128 million results. Any of those 128 million results could be brought to you by a patient who wants to know what you think. Dentistry is a profession based on trust. Patients trust you because they didn't go to dental school. They can't see their teeth and gums as well as you can. And even if they could, they wouldn't know what's needed or what to do about it. Patients trust you not only to carry out dental procedures correctly, but also to make appropriate suggestions, recommendations, and decisions, and to have a solid basis for doing so. Any patient who comes to your office willingly provides you with their personal health information, submits to an invasive set of examination procedures, then pays you a bunch of money, deserves to have their questions answered, and the best answers are those supported by the latest quality research findings, not by advertisements, word of mouth, or anecdotes. Since your patients won't be able to interpret the latest research, they'll count on you to do it for them. They need to feel like they're being treated well, and for most patients, that means knowing their provider bases their decisions on sound scientific evidence. Second, you owe it to yourself. You've spent your lives trying to be the best you can be. You probably were told you needed a good, good grades when you were young if you wanted to go to college. Then you were told you needed to get good grades in college if you wanted to get into dental school. You've always worked hard trying to do your best. So how can you be the best dentist you can be if you're not aware of what products, techniques, and tools work the best? If you don't know how to access and evaluate the latest research, how can you improve yourself as a dentist? Improving yourself will benefit your practice as well because few things build your practice more than taking time to listen to patients' questions and when you don't know the answer, taking time to access the research to later give them thoughtful and well-considered responses. If you go out of your way to improve your own knowledge and subsequently that of your patients, they'll go out of their way to keep coming back to your office and will tell other people to do the same. Finally, the public's oral health in general wouldn't be where it is without research. When I was growing up, after the dental hygienist had cleaned my teeth, my dentist would always come over and poke at my teeth with the Explorer and smile and say, 
boy, I'd trade my teeth for yours any day. And I'd think, no thanks, because he didn't wear a mask and I could see all the fillings in his front teeth. So even though he might want to trade his teeth for mine, I wouldn't want to trade mine for his. Later, when I was in dental school, I realized that we knew more at that time about prevention in materials than when he grew up. And it's only through scientific innovation, research and development, and formal testing that newer, better materials and preventive approaches become the standard of care. Advances in knowledge only happen because of high quality research. And advances in patient care only happen if knowledgeable providers implement appropriate changes based on valid research findings. Most dental students aren't interested in research as a career, but you don't have to make research your life's work for research to be an important part of your life. So for all of you in the D1 class, the goal of every dentist should be to provide their patients and the public with the best oral health. So it's every dentist's responsibility to support and implement good health-related research. To do this, you'll need to sift through a constant flow of information, all the while trying to distinguish the good from the bad. As stated by Dr. William J. Guise, founding editor of the Journal of Dental Research, quote, research in its highest expression is open-minded inquiry for truth to be found and revealed unreservedly for the information, instruction, advantage, and welfare for all, unquote. Ultimately, research is conducted so that people can benefit. So you, your patients, and the dental profession all will be harmed if good research isn't supported, if providers don't evaluate research properly, and if valid research findings aren't translated into proper patient care. Thanks for your time, and best of luck in your dental careers. I'm Professor Cunningham Ford, the course director for the first year course where we provide clinical experiences within the College of Dentistry. We are one of the very few dental schools in the U.S. where we see patients so early in our curriculum and we've done so for over four decades. This is one of the uh, primary reasons cited by our students for their decision to come to the University of Iowa College of Dentistry. And since January, we've been seeing each other, classmates, as patients to learn basic preventive patient assessment skills. And this has provided a nice, comfortable safety net to see someone that you know as a classmate in the clinical setting. And now it's time for us to move on to see other patients. The white coat ceremony signifies this transition in your professional life. With the granting of clinical privileges to see patients of record within the College of Dentistry clinics under the direct supervision of faculty. This involves a great deal of responsibility on the part of these students to provide dental care for our patients, and it is a significant responsibility that they will share with our distinguished faculty. Dean Stanford. On behalf of the faculty, I recommend that this class be granted clinical privileges to care for our patients within the College of Dentistry clinics under direct supervision of the faculty. I congratulate you on your hard work, along with the support from your family and friends that it has taken you to get to this point in your life. You can count on your classmates as lifelong friends to support you in this ongoing journey. We are ready for the first row. Dr. Alaretti will present the first group of students. Bailey Abbott.
It's harder than it looks. <laughs> Masia Fahad Atella. Cody Ayers. <laughs> Emma Behrens. Madeline Burst. <laughs> Reese Blacker. Gabrielle Bradley is not in attendance today, but um, we are uh, uh, congratulating her on welcoming a new baby last week. <laughs> Madison Bradley. Dr. Means will pre present the next group. Michael Brown. Bryce Butler. <laughs> Sarah Beisman. Bryce Carroll. <laughs> Joshua Carroll.
Nelson Cook. Brandon Cooley. <laughs> Elizabeth Corona. Dr. Cho will present the next group of students. Jessica Day. Matthew Diebner. <laughs> Austin Draws. Kevin Duque. Sarah Fangman. <laughs> Sydney Fisher. Amy Fong. <laughs> Dr. Friedrich will in introduce the next group. Taylor Friedrich.
Vegel Gordon. Emma Griffin. <laughs> Jessica Grundmeyer. Tala Hag Ali. Carolyn Halber. Carrie Hansen. <laughs> Destiny Ho. Dr. Ganesan will introduce the next group. Reed Hogan. Lindsay Hood. <laughs> Kyla Horsfield. Graham Hollersell. <laughs> Luke Holland Lopez. Jenny Hughes.
Tyler Jenis. Coleman Johnson. <laughs> Hannah Johnson. Dr. Marino will introduce the next group. Rachel Kellogg. <laughs> Greta Kumkis. John Lee. <laughs> Braden Lyman. Zena Mangelberg. <laughs> Corbin Masterson. Tori McConnell. <laughs> Gabriel Mum. Dr. Erica Teixeira will present the next group. Nathan Nauzari. <laughs> K. 
Kendall Oldham. Jack Olson. <laughs> Maya Olson. Blair Owens. <laughs> Rhett Peterson. V. Fon. <laughs> Jeremiah Poppin. Dr. Fabricio Teixeira will introduce the next group. Caitlin Richmond. Kelvin Ridher. Zelda Rodriguez. Maggie Rooney. Alexa Schleitler. <laughs> Reese Schweiner. Colin Sexton. (laughs) 
Nick Shaw. Dr. Warren will introduce the next group. Ellen Sneller. <laughs> Christina Spencer. Jagger Stevens. <laughs> Jackson Steigers. Alex Stone. <laughs> Brooke Swain. Morgan Swanger. <laughs> Jack Thomas. Dr. Weber Gasparoni will introduce the next group. Abigail Tiedemann. Scott Umberfield. <laughs> Tanvir Vazdeev. Marnie Vonderhaar. <laughs> Corey.
Cora Walker. Peter Westland. Taylor Westfall. Daniel Young. group a bit of time to get back around to their chairs. Congratulations to you all. So at this point, we're now going to have the reading of the dentist pledge, which is the equivalent of the Hippocratic Oath. Um, I would ask the first D1 class to please stand if you can. And the oath is in the packet that you were given. Please repeat after me as I read the first line and then you read. I, as a member of the dental profession, shall keep this pledge and these stipulations. I understand and accept that my primary responsibility is to my patients. And I shall dedicate myself to render to the best of my ability the highest standards of oral health care and to maintain a relationship of respect and confidence. Therefore, let all come to me who are safe in the knowledge that their total health and well-being are my first considerations. I shall accept the responsibility that as a professional, my competence rests on continuing the attainment of knowledge and skill in the art and sciences of dentistry. I acknowledge my obligation to support and sustain the honor and integrity of the profession and to conduct myself in all endeavors such that I shall merit the respect of patients, colleagues, and my community. I further commit myself to the betterment of my community for the benefit of all society. I 
I shall faithfully observe the principles of ethics and the code of professional conduct set forth by the profession. All this I pledge with pride in my commitment to the profession and the public it serves. Congratulations to the D1 class. What do you all think out there of this class? can sit. <laughs> all right, first of all, wow, white looks great on all of you. <laughs> okay, congratulations D1s and welcome to the next phase of your dental education journey. On behalf of the College of Dentistry, we are all truly excited for you to begin your clinical and patient care experiences. This concludes the formal portion of our ceremony. Thank you again to all of you that have joined us, both in person and all of you who uh, joined us live stream. Your continued support for these students is noticed and appreciated. One housekeeping note before we leave, uh, please feel free to gather on the outdoor patios you can access behind the stage. Uh, it's beautiful weather out and the Iowa River backdrop is perfect for photos with your students. So please feel free to use that space. And once again, congratulations, class of 2026.